welcome you to today's webinar titled Orientation to the ATE Conference for Student Attendees. I'm your host for today's webinar. My name is Mike Lasecki, speaking to you from the Maricopa Community Colleges in Phoenix, Arizona. The 2016 ATE Principal Investigators Conference is a unique event, and you'll hear much more about it today. Let me take us forward and introduce you to our presenters today. Joining us for the lead presentation spot is Ken Laurier. Ken is ATE Project Coordinator at the American Association of Community Colleges. Also working with us is Ellen House, Program Director at AACC. She's actually the person that organizes the conference and does all of the work that leads up to the conference. You'll hear a bit more about that as we go forward. Ken, would you come on, please unmute your microphone, and uh, let me ask you a question. I believe you actually live and work in Washington, D.C., is that correct? Um, hi, and good evening, everyone. I actually live in Virginia, but do work in D.C., yes, Mike. All of your D.C. folks live in Virginia. <laughs> a lot of us do, yeah. That's true. Ellen, would you come in and say hello to everyone as well, and then we'll get started. Hello, everyone. And actually, I'm a Maryland person. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much. Ken, why don't you go ahead and take us forward into the, today's presentation. Got it, and thank you, Mike. On behalf of AACC, I want to thank you all for joining us today. It is our hope that this webinar will help orient you to the conference, help you maximize your time while attending, and answer any questions you may have prior to next month. We've broken down this webinar into the following sections, and we'll be stopping after each section to address any questions you may have. For your reference, we will provide an ATE conference overview, which will give you a general conference background, registration, hotel, and travel information, and an overview of ATE student-related events, where we will go over student participation and student events at the meeting and address other commonly asked questions. So now by taking a quick poll using the silhouetted man icon at the top, I just wanted to get a sense of how many of you have come out to DC. Or excuse me, we could just use the polling sections in the, in the middle of the thing. Just take a moment to garner all the answers. It's like a majority of people, it's going to be the first time. Okay, Mike, we can um, close that. Well, that's awesome, and that's very excited. We're happy to be hosting and being the reason that you're going to be coming out to the Washington, D.C. area. In this section, what we'll cover is the what, the where, the when, the who, and the why. So I can bet a lot of you are wondering, what is ATE? AT actually stands for Advanced Technological Education, and all of your programs of study are funded by ATE grants to your college from the National Science Foundation. This conference is called the National Advanced Technological Education Principal Investigators Conference. Don't worry, we won't quiz you at the end, which is referred to commonly as the ATE PI Conference, or ATE Conference for short. So what exactly is a PI? PI stands for Principal Investigator, which is a term used to describe a project director for a grant. The ATE Conference is a national professional development and networking event for PIs leading ATE grants and their project partners. The event is co-sponsored by the National Science Foundation and the American Association of Community Colleges and is primar primarily funded through a grant to AACC. For those of you who may not be familiar with AACC, we are the primary advocacy organization for the nation's community colleges. AACC promotes community colleges through five strategic action areas, including recognition and advocacy, student access, learning, and success, community college leadership, economic and, economic and workforce development, and global and intercultural education. AACC has been working with NSF to host an annual ATE conference for the past 20 years. Now I want to take a moment to show you a brief video of the conference. We'll which will give you a visual introduction. Mike, if you would be kindly to start the video. I will, Ken. And let me remind you attendees that sometimes on some computer systems, sometimes a Mac, sometimes not, you might have a little difficulty playing this. It might not automatically play on your screen. So just have to deal with that. It's just about two minutes long. So here we go, Ken. I'm going to go ahead and launch the video.
Okay, this is Maria Chavez, a student at Lompoc High School. So you're in high school. You're doing some pretty cool stuff here. What, what do you got? What are you doing? Well, all of these things are made by students. Uh -huh. We use the 3D printer, the CNC machine, laser cutter. And over there we have our wind turbine that we made from last year's competition. Ah. We were in a competition in Anaheim and we won first place. Really? Yeah. With our, the wind turbine? Yeah. yeah. It, it produced the most energy. We made like 55,000 milliwatts. I'm also in the Cash Academy, Business Academy at my school, so I want to mix um, engineering and business together. Very nice. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Go ahead, Ken. You're all Thank set. Thank you, Mike. I always like looking at that video. Yeah, me too. Um, the conference is typically <laughs> excuse me. The conference is typically held in the Washington D.C. metro area, and takes place each year in October. The dates for the 2016 ATE conference are October 26th through the 28th at the Omni Shoreham Hotel. This is an actual picture of the hotel, which is a beautiful historic property near downtown D.C and is conveniently located on the red line of our metro line system and is within easy walking distance to a number of area restaurants and shops. Don't worry, we'll supply you with a restaurant list and area map as part of the student guide to the conference prior to the event. Approximately 800 people attend the conference each year. Participants include those leading grants for ATE projects and centers and their grant partners from business, industry, K-12, through and four-year institutions. The conference also provides the opportunity for approximately 60 students to attend, which you all are part of. So be proud of that. NSF program officers and AACC staff attend as well as selected guests. To repre which represent the federal government and STEM-related nonprofits and associations. In addition to the benefit of attending as described in the quote above, the ATE conference provides an opportunity for you to meet other students, learn about new technologies, learn about various STEM career fields, as well as provide you with an opportunity to learn from ATE leaders and industry representatives firsthand. The conference will also hopefully give you a chance to see DC and tour the city while you are here, since for a lot of you it's going to be your first time. Now on to conference costs, as I know you are all wondering who pays for what. I was once a student, so I know how important it is to budget and get a sense of what you are financially responsible for. For students, AACC will cover the registration fee and two nights of lodging. All other expenses will be covered by your respective institution or by your sponsoring ATE grant. If you have not already done so, you should discuss airfare, ground transportation, and meal expenses with your PI. The majority of students travel with their PI, therefore airfare and ground transportation to and from the hotel are covered. But if you are not traveling with your PI or another grant team member, you should talk with your PI on how ground transportation will be covered. AACC will provide the following meals during the conference. A reception on Wednesday evening, as well as a breakfast and lunch on both Thursday and Friday. Please note that you will need to pay for any additional meals outside the aforementioned and should plan accordingly for souvenirs. Now for hotel accommodations, registrations, and respective student activities. All students must use the 2016 ATE student information request form to make hotel reservations. Please do not make your own hotel reservations. If you have already done so, do not cancel your reservation. Just be sure to include that the confirmation number on the student information request form. This will guarantee that your room is covered by AACC. As stated before, AACC will cover two nights of lodging. If you plan to come in before or stay after, you will be responsible for the difference. The rate for additional room nights is $257 per night. The Omni extends the group rate based on availability for up to three days before and three days after the conference dates. When checking in, be aware 
be aware that you will have to provide a credit card to cover any incidentals that you may acquire while at the hotel, as you are responsible for paying for any incidentals, which can range from in-room phone calls to room service. Please note that if you use a debit card, the Omni will deduct $50 upon check-in, and it will take up to 10 business days after checkout to be reimbursed the difference. Also, be sure to confirm with the front desk when checking in that your room is to be charged to the AACC master account. If you have any problems, come to the ATE conference registration desk and we will get you squared away. After getting settled, you will want to come to the west wing of the hotel and pick up your registration packet. You will need to sign in at the registration desk and afterwards you will receive your conference materials from AACC staff, more than likely me. Please know that by signing in, you give AACC permission to use your photo within any AACC publication or media that promotes and shares information on the ATE program. You will also be given a quick guide for student events and a one-pager which highlights all student activities during the conference and will also include a local area map and restaurant list. Now we just went over quite a bit of information so I just wanted to take a moment and answer any questions or comments that you all may have. A couple of uh, questions in the chat window. Um, Ken, Ellen's already answered one of them. Is there wireless? And the answer is yes. Um, are we responsible for room service cost? Ken, do you know that or should we turn to Ellen? <laughs> I, I can answer that and if Ellen would like to jump in whenever, um, she can feel free to. But yes, the, the respective individual is responsible for any room service cost that they might acquire. But just note that we are going to be providing lunch, um, breakfast and lunch on some days. So any meals outside of event-related meal functions would be the responsibility of the participant. And room service is sort of spendy, isn't it? Uh, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, Ellen pointed out that even though on Wednesday night, even though we, we don't call it a dinner, holy cow, there's all kinds of hors d'oeuvres and sandwiches, and you can pretty much think of that as a dinner, so that's a good point. Yes, it's uh, it's very heavy, um, heavy hors d'oeuvres and everything else like that. So you can definitely stack and make a good plate. <laughs> if you here's one question that just came in, it says that if you if you check in and the hotel says you have to pay for your room, you know that, that they got it wrong, sort of. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I would ask that individual to come to the ATE conference registration desk located on the west side of the hotel and let us know. We'll make sure that the two nights lodging are complimentary and taken off your bill. Please note that the initial hold for incidentals upon check-in is not you paying for your room, and you will be refunded the $50 hold if there were no additional charges, i.e. room service or movie purchases. Good, Ken. Take us forward into the next section. During the conference, students often have the opportunity to present at various conference sessions. In the past, we've had plenary sessions, concurrent sessions, and breakfast roundtables led by students. This year, students will be asked to attend the Thursday morning plenary session, which will feature a student and faculty member panel. We will have space reserved in the front rows for students who will have the opportunity to ask questions first of the panelists at the end of the session. In addition, the conference will also offer an industry speed networking session specifically for ATE students. This session will afford students, student participants the opportunity to meet accomplished business professionals from a variety of backgrounds and companies. This special student-only session promises to be an enjoyable, fast-paced, and informative experience where you'll be given an opportunity to get some one-on-one -on -one time with industry contacts and where you will acquire and practice interview and communication skills. Also, new this year, for students that are arriving on early on Wednesday, AACC is sponsoring an informal meet and greet where you will be given a guided tour of the Omni and its extraordinary history. Afterwards, as an informal group, you will have the opportunity to go out and explore DC prior to the 6 p.m. opening reception. Please keep in mind that AACC will not be providing a tour guide or chaperone to go out following the Omni guided hotel tour. So don't go too far and always go as a group. As students, 
and a personal highlight of mine, you will also attend a recognition breakfast being held in your honor, and you will be presented with certificates recognizing your achievements in STEM by NSF staff. PIs are welcome to attend with their students, and the breakfast will take place on Thursday, October 27th from 7.30 to 8.45. AACC also gives students an opportunity to go on a tour in DC. This year, it will be a tour of the National Air and Space Museum, as well as an opportunity to see some of DC's monuments. Keep in mind that there's going to be quite a bit of walking, so be sure to wear some comfortable shoes. Be advised that if you're traveling with someone, unfortunately, they will not be able to accompany you on the tour, as we will only have space available to accommodate our student participants. You will need to sign up for the tour in advance and place that information on the student information request form. The ATE conference also gives students an opportunity to showcase and share information on their program of study and or career field. Here are a few pictures from previous student showcases. Here is a sample of how the showcase abstracts will look when printed in the conference program, as you are all asked to contribute a student showcase abstract with your student information request form. Students are expected to prepare a display related to their program of study and or their current work for the student showcase session. Students will present at the conference showcase on either Thursday or Friday. The times respectively are Thursday, October 27th from 12 to 2.15 and Friday, October 28th from 10.15 to 12.30. Here is a map of the exhibit hall where the showcases will take place. Students will showcase right alongside ATE projects. Each student can request a poster board and pins for their display. If you wish to obtain a poster board and pins on site before your showcase setup, please check with the registration desk and someone from AACC will provide you one for you to mount your display before bringing it down to the exhibit hall. Otherwise, poster boards and pins will be placed at your booth if you have requested one, and you can utilize it during the showcase setup period. Please note that the period to set up the showcase is as follows. For Thursday, October 27th, the setup is from 10.30 to 11.45, with the showcase is starting at noon. And on Friday, October 28th, student setup is from 7.30 to 8.45 a.m., with the showcase is starting at 10.15. Note that AACC will provide one piece of audiovisual equipment per booth. If you are coming with another student from your institution, you will be expected to share a booth. And while you both can have individual poster boards and pins, you can only request one piece of equipment per booth, so please choose wisely. The options are a TV with a DVD player, a 17-inch computer to monitor, or a projection screen. You must request these on the student information request form, which is, which is already passed through. And um, we've all been in communication back and forth, so I really do appreciate everybody's um, timely and prompt responses. We cannot also make changes or add equipment on site during the conference. So if you need to change your AV selection, please e email me as soon as possible and email me directly so we can accommodate your respective request. And just to reiterate, showcase um, session times are as follows. Thursday, October 27th, set up. 10.30 to 11.45 with showcase starting at noon and Friday, October 28th. Um, setup is from 7.30 to 8.45, showcase starting at 10.15. Note that the student breakfast is scheduled from 7.30 to 8.45 on Thursday. So students showcasing on Thursday are asked to set up their booths any time between 10.15 to noon. If planning to attend the industry speed networking session, students can set up their booths from 11.30 to noon. Here's uh, one of the photos of another highlight of the conference, the food. The main meals events include a heavy reception on Wednesday evening and two lunches on Thursday and Friday of the conference. The food events are offered in the exhibit hall right alongside the showcase sessions. As you can see in the pictures above, we do our best to feed you well. 
And here's a photo of our previous student cohort. Don't they look like they're having a good time? Don't worry. Those will be your smiling faces next month. Now, let's just take another moment and ask if there are any further questions about student activities at this time. Ken, thanks. We do have two questions. One is, how do you know which of those two things, the Thursday or the Friday, how do you know which one you're showcasing at? We will actually be notifying students um, by next week on their showcase assignments. OK, good enough. You mentioned um, the student breakfast. Is that a fancy thing? I mean, do we, should we dress up fancy for that? Um, that's a great question. Um, we suggest business casual, as you will have your picture taken with some NSF program directors. So some students prefer to dress nicely, so you may see some ties and collared shirts in the picture, but it's up to you and your comfort level on what you want to wear. I guess you're right. If you look at the screen right now, you can see everything from just plain old shirts to a tie and even a couple of jackets or whatever you're comfortable with. I guess that's true. It looks good. Yeah. OK, um, take us forward, Ken. Thanks, Mike. And in this section, I will address common conference questions and go over conference attire, internet access, and contact information. As previously stated, the conference attire is business casual, and we suggest that you dress in layers, as the conference rooms can be cool. We also suggest that you bring comfortable shoes, as there is a, great, a good deal of walking involved to get to some of the session rooms and to the exhibit hall. AACC has negotiated with the Omni to provide wireless access code for use by our conference participants in their sleeping rooms as well as common meeting areas of the hotel. We will provide you this code with your registration materials when you check in at the registration desk. And I will take some more questions or concerns if anybody has any. Yes, it had to do with a student who says their showcase, he had hoped to bring up a website that they developed as part of their project. But as far as I can tell, wireless is not going to be available in those showcases. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Mike. Um, there will be no wireless access downstairs in the exhibit hall. OK, good. So they're going to have to. Well, this, you, you can use static images to show your website. You don't have to actually pull it up live. That's what we do sometimes. So, it should Static be okay. images are great. And then also, if you, wanted, if you had a video or something, you can always put it on a thumb drive or flash drive and just loop it as well, just to kind of give that interaction. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, video, just playing out a video there, too. OK. Um, go ahead, Ken. I think we're doing fine. And just a reminder that the student information forms were due on Tuesday. So if you've not already submitted your forms or are missing some information, you've more than likely received an email from me just following up. So please respond at your earliest opportunity and get back to me with that respective information. If you've already filled out the form and need to make any changes, please email me or give me a phone call, and I'd be happy to accommodate those requests. My contact information is stated above. If you find that you have any questions about the conference or your participation, the best way to reach me is by email. But I always welcome phone calls. At this time, I'm going to turn it back to Mike. But before I do, I just want to express our sincere gratitude and thanks for you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. I hope that this was informative and gives you insight to what you can expect at the AT conference. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, Ken. Here's the most critical question. Is there Uber available in DC? <laughs> that is a great question. And yes, there is Uber available. Good, good. One other question. Many of us will be arriving at the conference at Wa Washington. Oh, it's not called Washington National anymore. Reagan Airport, DCA. Uh, what are my options? What are our options getting from the airport to the hotel? Well, you have three options. You can take public transport, which is our Washington Metro Rail system. Uh, there, DCA is, the, I believe, the yellow and the blue line. So upon exit, just look at the 
great big map. You, where you're going to come to is Woodley Park, which is on the red line. So you will have to transfer. If this is your first time in D.C., I'd say get acquainted, you know, uh, maybe a day or two, and then maybe take the metro. You also have the option of taking a taxi um, from D.C.A. to the Omni Shoreham, or as you mentioned, you can take an Uber and or a Lyft to get to the hotel. Good. Thank you. I know that um, many of us use the, the public transportation, the metro. It runs till midnight, is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Mike. Um, metro will be open. I believe it opens around 5 a.m. and then it shuts down because we're actually in the process of safe track, which it should be done by the time um, next month for the start of the conference. But Metro does close at midnight. Do you think there will be time? Here's another question that came in. Is you know this sounds like a busy schedule. Is there any time where students can explore on their own? Maybe jump on the public transportation, go down to the mall to see some of the monuments down there. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, I mean, we do have the this the Air and Space Museum on Thursday from 3:15 to 6:30. So, although it's a curated tour that gives you an opportunity to kind of see the city, but then you can also, after the meet and greet at 1:30 and prior to the reception starting at 6 o'clock, have an opportunity to kind of see the northwest um, part of DC where we're, where the hotel is located, and then you'll definitely have an opportunity on Friday um, if you're still within the area to come and see everything. But yes, we do have a relatively uh, jam-packed uh, schedule for the students. Cool. You know, around the hotel, many of us know that hotel, not every meal is provided with the conference. And so are there opportunities outside of the hotel which can be a little expensive? For example, can I walk over to McDonald's? Is, is that possible? Oh, yes, most definitely. There's a McDonald's, a Chipotle, and other fast food chain restaurants that are, I'd say, within a quick five-minute walk from the hotel, seven minutes at most. And then there's also a really cool strip um, right next to the hotel that has a lot of, you know, um, mom-and-pop kind of stores, too. It really is um, a neighborhood there, isn't it? Ellen is mentioning there's a great diner right across the street. Um, I think I've been there. It's actually a very convenient place to hang out and, and to, to meet, go places with friends, so I think that's good. But what about at nighttime? Um, can you walk around the hotel? What if you're uh, a young woman or a young man? Can you go out on your own? What's it like? You can go out on your own. We always suggest to just go out in pairs and in groups just just as a size of precaution, but it is a very safe and well-lit highly trafficked area, so it's safe to walk around at night. There's several restaurants and shops within easy walking distance, but we always just want to use caution of your surroundings, and we, we would suggest to just always go in a pair, just have somebody that's accountable for you as well. Sure, makes sense. Okay, friends, we're, we're in, right now we're perfectly on time. Thank you, Ken, for a very informative presentation. Let me end with uh, just a sort of fun question. Let me turn to Ellen. Ellen, if you can come back on. What's your favorite monument? If, if, if you've got visitors coming to your house, where do you, where do you send them to? What's your favorite one? Um, I actually really like the Lincoln and the Vietnam War Memorials, and I like to do them at night. Uh, so Thursday evening, when you're done for the day, you could venture back to the mall. Uh, the monuments at night are just really dramatic and just a very, very different feel to them. That sounds good. What about you, Ken? If you had to recommend you had time to see one thing, they're going to air in space. Well, what about some other stuff? What would you recommend? Um, I would echo what Ellen said, and then also the African American um, Museum actually is just opening up, so that would also be a great place to stop down and just kind of get a great sense of what DC has to offer. Right. All right, thank you both. Uh, Ken, uh, Ellen, it's always a pleasure working with you. We'll look forward to seeing you next month. Um, people that have logged in today, I hope that all of you will um, get a chance to say hello. I'll be wandering around the halls as well. As we wind up today, I'd like to launch a survey. And what that does is that helps us um, improve this webinar thing. So it's going to come up right now on the screen. I'm going to launch it. If it doesn't launch for you, click on the link and then browse to it. Uh, Ellen and Ken, please leave the survey alone. The uh, Friends, as you finish these couple of brief questions, 
we appreciate your uh, help in doing that and also look forward to seeing you next month. This officially ends our webinar. Ken and Ellen, thank you again. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you Janet. Goodbye.